Okay, what's up? What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Planet Xbox Podcast. I am your host, Best Bot Kiss Smooth, and I got my co-host, Lord Gaming Attic. How are you? What's going on, man? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's been going on. Uh, I don't know about you, because I, I know you're not a big fan of the, the Souls-like games, but there's a lot of stuff going on, man. Yeah, the, um, there, there was a DLC that came out um that seems like everybody's struggling with sorry but they couldn't pay me the to, to play that um uh to go through anything like that but um shout out to hey. from software and elder ring how much would it take how, how much would the the community have to gather for you to give it a try like a valid try to actually uh, considering that the problem with the game right now is that the fact that I have a, the issue I have with it is that I think I have to get through two bosses in the primary game to get to this portion. And none of these bosses are, I guess, required to beat the game. And I beat an Elden Ring, but I, you know, I, I didn't take on every boss. Um, so considering that, assuming, let's say, if I have a hard time just getting into the DLC, this is, this is, that's like a stack. That's the stack. And I I give myself how, what is the average play time of this game? 40 hours. 40 hours? If they give me 50, I can probably I think I get I I I will attempt 50 hours to to try to complete it. So, just to clarify, you would uh you would give the give it an honest go for fifty hours. Yep. But you you would need a band that that's supported. I would need a, I would need a stack. I okay. I need a, I would need a healthy stack because I would actually try to I would have to take some time off. I would take time off of work. I would have to get at least a couple business days off, um, to mentally prepare for something like that. But um, man, uh, there was. I watched ILP. I missed you there. What what, what happened? It just wasn't up for it, man. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. We haven't done a show since, I want to say, maybe just before. Almost I don't even, a week. We, I, feel like, I feel like it's longer. I feel like it's been longer. We may have missed two weeks then. Might have. Um, so since then, I, uh, we've obviously we had the Xbox uh, sh uh, showcase, we had the Nintendo Direct. There's been a couple um, uh, things happen. Obviously, Xbox stays in the news. Uh, first things uh, I do want to talk about is Black Myth Wukong and this. Uh, Are you it's talk about missing. Missing from the Xbox. Uh, it comes out August, I think, twenty fifth. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. When they first, when we first got the release date for Black Black Myth Wukong, we got it at the Game Awards last year, right? Yes, and it had every every platform. And the Summer Games Fest is where we got just an updated trailer. And this this time, Xbox is missing, right? Mm -hmm. And they're saying they due to optimization, they want to get it to standards on Xbox consoles. My issue is when they say that, right? They said that in June, but they didn't know that in December. I feel, and I think I know where you're going with this because it's, uh, you know, are we going to talk about the interview? Because I think that's where you're heading with this conversation. Yeah, the the, the window center interview where they okay, reached. So let's just jump straight into it. Then go ahead and set it up. Let's let's talk about it. Uh, yeah. Let me see if I uh, said, I know I made it tweet about it that's what i have to use as a reference uh point is i snipped um the the enter of at least a quote because that was the most important thing was a quote and uh so jazz Corden and windows central like they reached out to microsoft regarding like i'm assuming the question was why you know is this not launching simultaneously with the other platform because it is a weird situation yeah normally if like something's internally like not gonna hit metrics it would just be delayed and uh, delayed in, uh, indefinitely. Well, like not indefinitely, but yeah. it would just be delayed. Uh, you know, in what they say, a month. Like to me, a month doesn't seem relevant enough to for this to be 
Like, it, it's just crazy. Like, if it was strictly just a month, I feel like if it was just the the optimization, they would just delay the game a month. Uh, but yeah. to me, it feels like, and this is just me, it does feel like even if it came out a month later and it was optimization issues, it's still not going to come day and date. Yeah. Like, it, it does feel a little bit to me, and especially, like, them bringing up, like, partners in their, in their deals. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know PlayStation. I guess it will come down to this PlayStation petty enough to lock something up for a month. And I think that's what it comes down to. Because I, I don't know. I honestly, truly don't know. Uh, when it first happened, if you remember, I blamed it on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a month? I mean, didn't we, who could confirm a month? Is the, uh, I, I think the developer said it was coming out a month later, didn't I? I not that I didn't hear anything like that. But the quote and we got. Maybe I messed that up. The quote we got so far, it says uh, Microsoft response to uh, Windows Central was, we're excited for the launch of Black Myth Wukong on Xbox Series X and S and are working with Game Science to bring the game to our platforms. We can't comment on the deals made by our partners with other platform holders, but we remain focused on making Xbox the best platform for gamers and great games are at the center of that. Now, if that's not dry snitching, I don't know what is. Um, and I think Jez confirmed that that was an unprompted r- response in terms of the partners because they didn't. I don't it's, think they. Yeah, it's it it doesn't make sense like logistic wise. Like, why would yeah. you? And maybe PR developed that wording to get us talking about it, so to like take away some of the uh, fault on, on mm-hmm. Xbox side. I don't know. Uh, that's just speculation as well. Like, it is interesting the way that uh, that response was handled. The the spooky thing the thing is is that people was like oh you know you know you no know, Microsoft is lying they're they're pulling that straws but my thing is is that when this happened with Baldur's Gate I mean that was a bigger game w- Wukong is unproven like Wukong's yeah, an un- yeah. unproven game they don't have to get out in front of that like Baldur's Gate what do they do at Baldur's Gate they they work with them they got in the lab and they got in front of it is they Wukong even, split screen nah it's just a regular fucking Souls knockoff running off. Unreal Engine 5. That's all it is. There's another Souls knockoff. Well, Unreal Engine games are taxing, but I feel what you're saying. Like, this doesn't see, this seems like there's some, there's something we don't know. I will admit on that. Like, there, this doesn't feel like the everyday type of thing going on. Now, I mean, now, did Sony swoop in and money had? That's what we're, what I, what we think. The thing is that people like, it's like, okay, reason why I don't put it past Sony is like PlayStation operates like, I want to say, masterfully when they're when they have no content. They op- they pretty much they secure as much content like like their 2021. I don't think they had any major games, but they had a lot of games. And that was because they snagged up a lot of like second party, third party um, uh, games. 2023, they only had Spider-Man. Everything else was provided by Square Enix. And I think that's the same thing that happened this year, too. Um, So, when you consider, like, for example, back in the day, there was this game called Project Eve that was announced. It was announced for Xbox One and PlayStation 4 and, I think, PC. That game later turned into Stellar Blade and is a PlayStation exclusive. Like, so this is not a first time... PlayStation has, there's a game that was announced or revealed as a multi-plat, a full-blown multi-plat, and then be re-revealed again as an exclusive or some sort of exclusivity to the PlayStation platform. And I mean, uh, we, we did see this with Tomb Raider, too. Remember, it was announced. Uh, I think... Well, Tomb Raider was actually it, never announced as a PlayStation game. It was, it was showed on Xbox E3. A, and then it was it, confirmed it was in exclusive. It was never showed on us. Like they they never had the platforms up. But I think they never straight out said it wasn't coming to everything either. I, I think the the biggest thing about this is even though that if it is some form of you know um, that's what I'm looking for. If it is some form of issues with you know optimization. 
why wasn't Xbox at least on that screen? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, it could still be on that screen because it's still coming out. Now, obviously, they could say the logistics of the of the matter later. Like, okay, this is, you know, timed exclusive or mm. not a timed exclusive. That's probably a bad word. Uh, just talking about whether or not this game makes sense to be in the situation that, that it's in. But it's just part of me just like, I don't, I don't understand how if this game needed a little bit more time, mm-hmm. why didn't they just give it to it and still come out everywhere at the same time? Like that that's why I don't to be honest with you, I don't care either well. Yeah. But it is an interesting thing. I wouldn't blame people for, you know, scratching their head a little bit off. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, again, I'm I don't think I have the itch um you know, when a game comes out, if it, if it, if the game is popping, I will pick it up. I don't know if I'll I'll do it on uh PC or PlayStation, um, but again, this is a, a a game that like again, it's another Souls game. Souls games come out like there's literally literally about like forty of these things on your current Xbox and PlayStation store right now that you could buy for about like thirty dollars that are really good. There's a lot of Souls games out now. I know this one is doing something a little bit different with the folklore, the Chinese folklore and stuff like that. It does have this cool thing visually. It does uh, look appealing, but um, the perception that it gives is I, I don't like the perception that everything's coming down to optimization. It's like as if, like we've we've had situations with the age of the PS3 and you know the, you are right. We don't have enough information to just assume shit. But I would say that if you see a pattern, I don't blame people for mm-hmm. putting that pattern together. But Does I that think... mean it's true or not? No, but I, I don't blame people. It's like we're assuming that. PlayStation locked it up for a month. Does, does that make sense in the grand scheme of things? No, but PlayStation's had a a history of doing that, so I yeah. don't blame people for assuming it. Yeah, honestly, like the thing is, is that if it's if they sign any deal for this game or any secret deal for this game, I don't think it's a month. I think it's three months. Um, I think what I think happened. I think PlayStation made a lot of deals, finalized a lot of deals because they probably didn't know how this whole Activision thing was going to. Uh, it pan out. Um, to me, I don't think any of these deals make sense for them. Um, but again, it, it does. It does help in a year that you know they didn't have any games, like any like like thing for anything major first party. I know Concord is coming, and uh, and that's you know pr- that hey that could be that could be a popular hit. See what happens. Um, we know. Um, Astrobot is coming at the end of the year, but that's like you know it's a children's game, um, and then the Lego Horizon, which is a full blown multi plat, um, which is again it's fine, but we know how much the exclusivity means to the PlayStation community. Um, it's uh, it's just it's just a weird scenario. I'm I'm sick of it, and I, I don't like it. And you notice obviously this generation, you know, the age of uh, social media developers are very. You know, they're more spoken, they're more like talkative. And I feel like a lot of these people are, are latching on to the same thing. If you if you blame the Xbox Series S, it, then it's valid. Because for some reason, people act like games haven't been made for a weaker platform. Like, the people forget yeah, that this, on PC, isn't it? Yeah. They forget that this, a, a Nintendo Switch still is alive and kicking. Um, but the Series S is the problem. Um the other thing that came out, obviously, was a, uh, there was a handful of like Japanese games, some retro games uh, that are being ported, that are coming out that are skipping the Xbox. And some are by Square Enix, uh, some are by Capcom. Um, this is also obviously not a good look uh, as the games are being uh, uh, skipping the, the perception. Even though the way I look at it, and correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of these games, if I'm mistaken, aren't these games are just releasing or porting to like the PS, like PS4 gen? sort of thing and it just yeah apparently there's some like logistic matter that's mm-hmm. the issue where um i guess the xbox one backwards compatibility wasn't as fluid as like the ps5 and they're just straight up doing an emulator and i guess xbox isn't doing that to uh, the t so that's why you're seeing some of these games that aren't being you know a little bit of extra work happening uh no i no. still think I don't think huh? it's, no, it's not that. I think what happens is that these games are like straight up like PS4 releases, right? That if Xbox, let's say if Xbox One was like, 
you know a competitive platform that if they they would if they release on Xbox One they will just release on series just just by the state of backwards compatibility. These are native like PS4 uh, native PS4 ports, and the thing is is since the Xbox One pretty much is is, is dead essentially to these developers, uh, they're not going to work on the port for Xbox One. So that it can be a, a, a game for it. essentially, if you're not making the game for the Xbox One, you're not making it for uh, the Xbox Series because the Xbox Series would have just played these via backwards compatible compatibility. Yeah, and plus, even if it is what, even if like it is what they're being said, it is the Xbox Series S. If that is the case, then play Xbox you know, should be ashamed of themselves. Cause it's like, if you put yourself in a situation where you're talking about, you know, your platform losing games because of something that you decided to do, like they need a, a whole team. That's the only job is okay. You're having issues, especially big titles. Okay. You're having issues. What? All right. Let, let me send the group. Like, cause to me, we're seeing too much of this. You know, I'm not saying that it's a, it's like one thing or the other. I think, realistically it's probably a variety of variables that's leading to it but like it feels like every month there's a game missing xbox at this point yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and xbox needs to do a better job at tightening these reins because it's like how are we getting square Enix now it feels like we're losing capcom games yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's crazy it's like yeah you you, you repair a relationship with one and then but the thing is these are again these are like old games and i don't want to sound like i'm dismissing them um it's just that, honestly, the it's only bad. It's only news because games are not coming to Xbox. Had these been straight up just releases on all things, the talk wouldn't be there. I think the only thing that would be getting talk is Capcom versus Marvel 2 since it's like, you know, uh, a, a classic game. But other than that, this would, it would have just been... And then if when it does come out, I don't think it's going to be support it to the degree where people are going to buy it in droves you know it's going to be nice to have nice to show up on your store uh something cheap to buy but i don't think this is going to be a major seller on any platform and that's not an argument for it not to exist it's just that i'm not going to over exaggerate for for some of this stuff wukong like i said is more so it's, it's a bit of an issue because there, right now there's a ton of games coming out every year uh well every month for the Xbox Series X and S by even smaller developers. And there's a ton of games coming out uh, utilizing Unreal Engine 5, and the Series S is capable of doing it. Um, so I, I can't have the... And, and, these, and also you got developers going making games for the Switch and making them, you know, optimizing to a degree where it's tolerable. And you're telling me uh, you can't, like, make a game for... You have to delay games, like... You have to delay your game only on a specific platform. And again, at the end of the day, though, I will say Xbox did put themselves in this position, not by creating the Xbox Series S. Uh, the Series S is a fine platform, uh, a console. They did this to themselves by not being a competitive platform. Um, if I, most a uh, developer, it should be it should be harmful for developer to miss a platform. It, that should be that should be a that should hurt their bottom line right and like you no know, xbox should be a, comp uh, a a competitive platform to play on to the point where it's like no i gotta get my stuff on xbox gotta get it on playstation to maximize revenue and it's the way it's being treated is like if you put your games on xbox you're not maximizing revenue you can literally skip the xbox and be fine if you got playstation and pc and i and i think that's where you know the mistake is when that we're xbox not prioritizing uh, the Xbox as a console uh, in a way that they should, the way that you no know, PlayStation does their consoles and whatnot. It should be, it should be, it, it's a necessary platform to have. So it it does feel like Xbox is be like, look, this is an issue, but we're not really focused on the console as much. So it doesn't feel like they're like Xbox on their end or or, or putting in resources to prevent the issue. Yeah. yeah, like it does feel like, oh, you're not coming on Xbox. Uh, what can we do? And then if like if there's nothing immediately that could be done, so okay, you know, uh, just get it when you can. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, no, nah, and it, 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 it's it's emb it's embarrassing. Now the thing is, I will say, you know, um, 
to me personally, again, like I look at these things, but then I look, I, I also have to look on the flip side to look at the games that, you know, I'm into the games that I'm playing, uh, the games that are coming. A lot of the things that I'm excited about are coming to Game Pass. A lot of the games that are skipping Xbox are games I'm not interested in, games that aren't on my radar, with the exception of Wukong. Uh, but the uh, rest of the games aren't on like a radar. Me, like I'm looking forward to uh, Flintlock Siege of Dawn uh, next month. Um, I'm looking forward to um, um, freaking Towerborn when that uh, comes out. Obviously, the big games from Xbox Avowed and Indiana Jones, and um, there's freak Star Wars Outlaws. Like, like, like so, and that comes out at the end of August. So. Believe it or not, like what my summer would have looked like in a situation like that, I probably would have obviously got through Flintlock through July and August. I probably would choose Outlaws over Wukong. I would go with Outlaws first because that seems like a you know a game I could jump into more approachable, and then I would have probably went into Wukong after that, assuming that none of Xbox games releasing in September. I'll probably go with like a Wukong over a stock or two. I might dibble and dabble a stock or two, but it's like a hardcore immersive sim type game. So I probably would, it probably wouldn't pique my interest, but Wukong maybe. Uh, so like I'm satisfied with the games that are coming. I think that enough of them are coming enough good quality games. So when these, when these games do skip Xbox, there's you no, know, there's other things there, quality stuff that I think are better than the games that are skipping the platform. So, so. Well, yeah, I, I, I think this is one of those scenarios where Microsoft, they just got to do better. It's like, look, I don't care why these games are missing. I don't care if it's on the Series X or Series S side. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care if it they just... And it's even worse that they just simply don't want to port them because they feel like right yeah. now that's not a priority. It It doesn't matter what the issue is. They need to fix it. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that happened over the past days, uh, weeks, that since we've uh, since uh, since I've been away, uh, Microsoft they had a shakeup at the marketing side. You know, Aaron Greenberg is still around. You know, shout out to Aaron Greenberg. But it looked like they uh, they there was some something on the market side change where somebody one of their head honchos went over to Roblox and. Uh, they, I guess, they made a, another move from within that I guess the insider saying is a good move. I'm not sure if you heard about this or what your thoughts on, is on this. So, Roblox going to PlayStation? No, the Roblox. So, the Xbox marketing head went to Roblox. He left at Microsoft Xbox and went to Roblox. So, the person above Aaron Greenberg? Yeah. Well,. You said they need to do a better job. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's the reason why it's on my mind. Because the thing is, one of the things I critique Xbox the most for is their marketing efforts and advertising. So I'm hoping uh, the person that they, uh, I got to look up who's. Let me try to see if I can find who's Xbox marketing. I think he's more product facing, which is good because that means I mean Xbox has a lot of Tap. products to market so all right reorg all right so microsoft reorg is the xbox and marketing teams to prepare for an ai in gaming future microsoft is reorganizing this xbox gaming and marketing leadership less than two weeks after acquiring activision blizzard microsoft is promoting matt booty to president no 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 this is old oh wait a minute yeah this is from october so that person that they hold up there we go. All right. Marketing is sex. Okay. Microsoft shakes up Xbox marketing as key exec departs for Roblox. Yeah. Microsoft losing another key Xbox executive at the end of the month. Xbox chief marketing officer Jarrett West is leaving Microsoft to join Roblox as its new CMO and head and head of market expansion. Microsoft gaming CEO Phil Spencer confirmed the move in an internal memo to Xbox employees today, which is obtained by The Verge. West previously spent eight, previously spent eight years at Microsoft on the Xbox marketing side before departing in 2011 and then eventually spent spending seven years at Netflix as a head of marketing. West returned to Microsoft in late 2019. 
leading the marketing for the launch of the Xbox Series S and X consoles. Well, he did a good job marketing the Series X and X consoles for like that first year. Things just uh, shit to bed after that. West team is responsible for developing marketing plans for games, hardware, and Xbox Game Pass. Microsoft is now shuffling around some of its marketing teams in the wake of West's departure, and there will be a new expanded, expanded central gaming marketing team under Kristen Ward. VP of uh, Kirsten, I'm sorry, Kirsten Ward, VP of Xbox Integrating Marketing. Spencer says Microsoft Gaming Leadership Team has decided to place a marketing closer to the business they support. As a result of West's departure, games marketing will now sit inside game content and studios division that's led by Matt Booty. Xbox marketing led by Chris Lee will move to the Xbox org and report up to the Xbox president, Sarah Mon. So, Looks like everything is going to be centralized into their gaming uh, thing. So uh, if, if he's reporting to Matt Booty, so that means that the marketing should focus on the games and uh, Game Pass. We'll see if the, these things improve. I'll be watching that closely over the next, I guess, I would say mostly closer to the end of the year when they have games to uh, put out. Um, but we'll see. We'll do, see. What do you think they do with position? What do you mean? Do you think they like give it to Aaron Greenberg? No, they, it, everything just keeps at this. It's just that they moved it. Uh, they pretty much funneled it like this is more so a gaming division thing. Um, Aaron, I don't quite know what Aaron Greenberg's role is. Um, I know he's in the marketing, but I don't know where he on the totem pole. Where where is he at? I wonder if if there's like an or like a, a chain of commu- uh, communication or chain of command tree that you, that's visible somewhere for us to check the stuff out. But um, I don't know, you know what I mean? Because sometimes people tell me like, you know, it's not Aaron Greenberg's like fault and whatnot. But when the Hellblade, when it came down to Hellblade, didn't he tweet about like a list of things that they're going to be doing for Hellblade to improve their marketing and. Um, they did thing. do it. They did put some money a little bit behind. Yeah, yeah. I've, I see, like, I've seen Hellblade t- uh, trailers a couple times on YouTube. I think I might have seen a TV ad. Uh, I got the full screen when I booted up my Xbox, which is fine. I, I like it. I, I encourage them to, you know, show off games. You know, show do, sell your games. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, there, I don't know which one. I think is it the Euro- European sales came out today. People are celebrating the fact that Hellblade wasn't in the top 100 for the Europe for Europe sales. Any thoughts on that? Ah, you know I don't care about sales. Sales is like the least thing that you know are affected to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think that in terms of Xbox in general, you know the sales aren't looking the hottest. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, hopefully, with that, you know, we'll see a dramatic pickup when the Call of Duty thing happens because. You know, when it comes to like Amazon pre-orders and stuff, you know, we we got to see how that actually transforms when the game comes out. Yeah, man. Um, I'm curious to see how this Call of Duty is going to impact too, because like, um, it's there's a couple things that's that's going to happen. Obviously, so the bit the 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 beta is going to come right. And it's already been confirmed. What I've been saying, like, if you're a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, you should have automatic access to the beta. That is true. If you're on PlayStation, obviously, you have to have the game, you know, pre-ordered to get access to the beta. Um, I'm curious to see how people react. Um, uh, Like, are people going to go out and buy Xbox Series? Is there going to be a jump in sales for the Xboxes? Like, are how... Are people going to be react to the game being in Game Pass? Will Call of Duty sales drop, you know, or will it increase? Uh, or will they get their kick and eat it too? Have the best selling game and have a, a, a huge influx in Game Pass subscribers. Um, I'm curious to see how this all uh, uh, plays out. And the one thing I do want to talk about because. Right now, we're late June. It's been more than six months since this deal closed, right? 
we haven't had the West. What's going on with this back catalog? There's only one game in Game Pass from the Activision Blizzard deal, and that's Diablo 4. And Call of Duty is the only new game going in day and date uh, that's been announced. But there's no back catalog drop. We went, we watched the Xbox showcase. There is no, you know, dump, Call of Duty dump or no ABK dump into Game Pass. And that still hasn't happened. And nobody's asked a question about it. Why isn't nobody asking Microsoft about that? Uh, the expectation was there. When, when you consider all the other active, act, acquisitions that were made, uh, especially with Bethesda, they did two major drops. One, the day that they had their roundtable, and the other one was when they had their, uh, I think, their 20th, Xbox 20th anniversary. The rest of the Bethesda titles went in there with that. What's going on? Like, what do you, what's the strategy behind this? Why? Why, like, why not even get, like, Crash and Spiral or some Tony Hawk games or, or, like, some, like, like, what's going on? Why are they, like, why haven't we got that massive drop yet? Or drip feed some drops. They haven't even drip feed any games. I don't know. It's part of the issue I had with Ryan McCaffrey's interview. Yeah. I felt like that he could not have gotten an easier interview. Like, he... Literally, like, there was no questions to anything. Like, uh, you know, the, when the Doom thing was brought up, all Phil said was, you know, uh, expect to see more games. There was no question on, you know, what do you determine? How do you determine what goes over? Is it just going to be Xbox games? Is it going to be Bethesda games and Xbox games? Is this, or is, you know, they, there was no pushback. And and that that's what just irritated me with that because that was another thing. Like, how is, like, I saw in everyone's prediction that, we're going to get a huge flux rate of games coming into Game Pass, mm -hmm. and we're 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 more than halfway through the year, and we've only seen really Diablo. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I'm I'm not mad. Diablo is fairly new. It came out in 2023, late late 2023, right? Um, but yeah, that uh, is it's really uh, disappointing. It doesn't feel like a Again, I know Call of Duty is a big deal, right? That's going to happen. But it, right now, I'm not feeling like I'm reaping the benefits of the deal as an Xbox customer yet. And I feel like, especially, it, which is, it should be a no-brainer, right? Because these, this time is very is very quiet. Xbox, you know, even though they have a lot of games coming uh, this year, they didn't front-load any of their games. And we only had Hellblade to open uh, to pretty much in the second quarter. But... They could have filled out the first half of the year with some Activision games, and I think that should have happened at least in the Game Pass to get, you know, like some activity going, some revitalize some of these games. Um, but I, I was just very, you know, disappointed uh, to see that dude. Like the fact that, and then there's nobody speaking on it, no one's asking about it. They're not talking about it. It's just, it's just very odd, very strange. I, I. I it wouldn't make sense to do it after they drop the newest Call of Duty. I was like, prepare me for the next Call of Duty by giving me some some of those older Call of Duties into Game Pass, and then like, you know, get me ready for uh, the next one. The next one. I apologize, guys. Yeah, it, it, I I don't know what's going on with that. Um, that's why I was like really frustrated with the the interview because I felt like if. If IGN is gonna ask them who the who the hell is, yeah, like, yeah. Speaking of, there was also another big interview that came out of nowhere. Like, uh, boy, Maddie plays got the interview. Like Todd Howard randomly didn't know this was coming. A good, yeah, our interview too. So uh, they got to talk about obviously Starfield. Elder Scrolls, Fallout, um, really, really good, really good interview for sure. Really good interview. What did you think of Maddie's interview? I didn't uh, get to watch it. You didn't get to watch it. I mean, you got at least some of the tidbits though, right? Nah, I, dude, I, I've been out of it. Like, I've been on Twitter really. Like, like Damn. mainly the past three days, I have slept. So, well, I didn't uh, make content. I ain't streamed. Like, well, hopefully you well, you are well rested, but uh, um, no, they're uh, 
I'm trying to think if I remember anything about that uh, interview, if, if if anything breaking. I know he made he commented on um, Fallout. One of the interesting things he said, because uh, you know how everybody's talking about the Fallout show and if they're like structuring to get Fallout, the next Fallout Five, off the ground and or make us a, a, a smaller Fallout game while we wait for Fallout. Todd Howard answer was like, you know, when he's thinking about this stuff, what can they do? that they can't put in Fallout 76. And I thought that was actually a good answer because isn't like I haven't played Fallout 76, but I assume Fallout 76 is just a live service Fallout game and they, they just keep adding expansions to, correct? Yeah. You know, Fallout 76, they, they can get a lot of that Fallout content that they want. Maybe, you know, make the world in Fallout, then expand on it in an actual game mm -hmm. but the, the thing that i hate is when they make these like elder scrolls online and fallout 76 like online infrastructure games and we're getting these situations where it's like they feel like you know they're making x amount of money doing these games mm -hmm. so why realistically should they spend money yeah. Yeah. to make these triple uh the triple a rpgs yeah i mean my thing is, it's like, I just wish it didn't take them so long to make their games. Um, you know, by the time, like, like their games are like, by the time we get Elder Scrolls, like, 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 the thing is, we might, we might be old, right? <laughs> like, so that's the thing. It's like, I wish they didn't take so long to make some of their games. And so, and that's why I understand why people ask for, like, you know, bring in Obsidian or ex an, an Exile uh, to pretty make a, a mid, like, you know, uh, a side game uh, in the world of Fallout or the world of Elder Scrolls. Um, and they did that, you know, they did that before, obviously, with Fallout, uh, with Fallout uh, New Vegas and whatnot, and it was very uh, successful. They never, I don't think they've never ventured off and did one uh, to... Um, uh, the Elder Scrolls. They talked about uh, if if they would ever bring uh, like remake, you know, the original Fallout twos in the way that they played. Uh, Todd Howard wasn't, you know, I guess he wasn't a fan of bringing those yeah, because those games have a certain charm to them that you know people sh would I guess play it like as it is how it was. Uh, they they brought up a, a, a couple things. They talked about Starfield, talked about how like there's like 25 million people playing um uh, their games and um and that they talked about uh, the uh the Starfield expansion and how uh focus is on talked a little bit about the Land Rover and whatnot. Um it was a decent uh interview, very good interview. Shout out to Mr. Matty Plays uh for securing that. Um I'm trying to think what else are we uh missing there i mean other than like the the latest shenanigans um nothing uh i'm trying to think i don't think anything major major happened um i did a video on the black myth wukong um and games miss skipping out on xbox which we talked about earlier before but I'm not again. I'm not too stressed out about it. Uh, Kana is coming out, you know, in August. So, uh, or finally for Xbox, I will be playing that. I will be definitely uh, playing that. I downloaded the game Still Wigs Deep. Uh, it was shown, I think, at the Game Awards last year. Um, that game is like really like trippy. I'm I'm a, I'm a playthrough, but it's going to be a slow playthrough. I think you can beat the game in like two hours. But when I say a slow playthrough, is because the game is like, I don't know if it's in like Scotland or whatever the language. They have a strong accent. You could do subtitles and everything, but it's a walking simulator. If, at least for now, it's a walking simulator. Um, and uh, but it looks good. Like visually, it does look good. The, the graphics that they got in there, um, they have a quality and a performance mode. Uh, but other than that, it looks like it's good storytelling, a good atmosphere. Um, and I, I gave it a try, started the game and I plan on continuing it. I picked up perfect dark zero again. Um, I'm going to finish that game, uh, 
the, the I just wanted to just get in the mood to, to, to play. I played it back in the day uh, during the 360 days, but I realized my achievements never popped for beating the campaign. And I think I, my achievements didn't pop because I think I started it single player and I think I finished it multiplayer. So I didn't get the achievements for either or. I didn't get the achievements for beating the whole campaign for co-op and I didn't get the achievements for beating the whole campaign single player. So all the achievements I got for Perfect Dark Zero are related to this multiplayer, which I tried to play. And I think it's completely dead because you can't get a single game. Um, I also wanted, like, I ordered, I didn't know, yo, Activision did so many licensing. games. I didn't know they were making TMT games with Platinum. I, I ordered one off uh, GameStop. It's an Xbox One era game. It's delisted. Uh, I purchased it. Um, it's called, uh, let me see, which, which t- uh, t- Ninja Turtle game this is. Sometimes I go and try to and grab some of these delisted games so that they, you know, I, they get their value back. Um, I got Deadpool, got Spider Man, um, The Amazing Spider Man too, and um, I have a Transformer game, but that game does not work. Uh, orders, here we go. I got yeah, the game uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mutants in Manhattan. Um, that yeah, game. I'm uh, really big, big fan of those type of games in general. So, are you? Yes, I've not been mm. one. I don't yeah. mind like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies, but yeah. I don't know if the games never really vibed with me like that. Yeah, I bought it just in case, man. Hopefully, uh, it works well. Expect it in the mail in the next uh, uh, by Friday. Uh, there's an article that released. It says GTA 6 release date has made Xbox very jumpy, Microsoft confirms. Uh, he says it appears that 2025 is set to be a massive year for gaming with big game releases and, and even a brand new console reportedly launching. It is no wonder developers are scared of stepping on each other's toes. You may have noticed that the last few weeks have been dedicated to quite a few gaming showcases from Summer so- Showcase. Gate or summer game fest to Nintendo Direct and everything in between. It is time where gamers can get excited about some upcoming releases. One such event was Xbox Game Showcase, which many viewers claimed was the best event of the year. However, said viewers also noticed that a lot of the upcoming titles had one thing in common a vague release date. Highly anticipated titles such as Perfect Dark Reboot, Doom the Dark Ages, and Fable were all given a vague. 2025 release date if anything at all which has some fans questioning if would be if we would even see them arrive anytime soon however the mystery has been somewhat solved during a recent interview with xbox matt matt booty uh what he said in the uh the uh, variety strictly business podcast uh i think many across the industry are are Wow, I can't read today. My God. He says, I think many across the industry are, of course, going to plan around GTA uh, 6, not GTA 5, GTA 6. Uh, And we're all looking forward to that game, which should be amazing, uh, Booty replied. This perhaps unsurprisingly consider that Grand Theft Auto 6 has become one of the most anticipated titles with it being over 10 years since the last. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, fans are eager to dive back into the chaotic world. Okay, what else? So, Mad Booty said, For us, I think the issue is much making sure we don't step on ourselves. We have a pretty big portfolio, we have a pretty big lineup through all through the spring, and we certainly want to make sure that every game is given space and has the opportunity to shine. How do you avoid an Xbox case? How do you avoid yourself, and how do you avoid Grand Theft Auto at the same time? Cause I feel like they, they must have an ideal when these games are coming out. There's no way Microsoft doesn't know a timeline of when these games are coming out. Well, we, now maybe maybe Rockstar and them, uh, they might have a flimsy date and they don't know what time these games are coming yeah. out. Now Rockstar is, uh, Grand Theft Auto is what fall of 2025, right? If that's the case, then. 
the uh, Xbox, like this year, for example, I I don't know how any of their games coming are going to have room to breathe because they're all released at the second half. Like Towerborn is uh, well, at this point it, to me, I think it's coming out the second half because it's uh, it's already June. Unless they're going to shadow drop the, sh- the the thing next month. Um, Stalker Two September. Uh, Avowed is supposedly November. Indiana Jones is supposedly November or December. Uh, Call of Duty is late October. Like, uh, Flight Sim is November. Like, the spacing for games, yes, they, they have them. The spacing is horrible. I think they really should have worked to get these games out. And then Starfield, oh my God, the Starfield expansion. Shattered Dreams. We will. My that biggest we, issue is. Like, I don't care about, like, Fable, Perfect Dark, uh, South of Midnight. I still hold them accountable. And, like, why didn't we get an Avowed or an Indiana Jones release date? Like, yeah, these yeah. games were supposed to come out this yeah, year. Absolutely. And my thing is we should have got the release date because they control Call of Duty. And they, that was the first release date we got was Call of Duty. They control Call of Duty. So you know Call of Duty is releasing, releasing October 25th. So you know you can all like, okay, October 25th, is, we got Call of Duty. Now we can just put things all around that. You know what I mean? It's like, like I, I don't understand how they would like would it master that. And then you got to decide what's the bigger game. Is it Indiana Jones or Avowed, right? Avowed is literally, uh, they, uh, there was a report saying Avowed is more like the Outer Worlds in terms of like, the how long you could beat it and that the, the the way that it's structured some people tried to turn that into a bad thing i don't see why i think that's actually perfect i actually like my games like that like i don't want a super ultra long bloated i will participate in some of these long bloated games but it's not what i'm actually going for if you can make a nice concise experience in a form of 25 to 35 hours dude i will do that that would that's those games tend to be like my favorite type of games when they're when they're executed well. Like I think I'd like the Outer Worlds were was like one of my favorite games that year. Um and they did it right. And I and I think I did I, I played through that in the, the DLC. Games like again, Dead Island 2 too, also not not ultra long, but long enough. Uh they they tend to be my favorite games, man. But um I've just gotten to the point where it's like, I guess now the industry itself, not just Xbox, is holding these uh, release dates to the to the chest. Mm-hmm. So I, I think this is probably going to be the standard for a while. So when is a good time to release these games? Are these just like Twitter release dates? Like I don't know. Like maybe Gamescom, because apparently they're supposed to be. At Gamescom too. So. Yeah, Xbox is going big at Gamescom this year, so they say. But you know, PlayStation, is, you know, is backed out of Gamescom again. Xbox will be there, but Xbox is going there. They list a bunch of games, but one of the games that are missing is Indiana Jones. Now, question: Should we be worried at Indiana Jones there, or is it not there through, due to political reasons? Um, say that again. Sorry, Indiana Jones, not at Gamescom. Oh, Indiana Jones. Um. Are you saying Indiana Jones wouldn't be there because it's Ger- uh, it's Germany? <laughs> yeah, like, I I don't know how like the what the current day Germany reacts to like you know the, the like the Nazi representation or like the yeah you're, you're right the, uh, they might have to like if they show it on the floor mm-hmm. maybe uh, do they'll have to edit the the scene because if they give a vertical slice it'll be easier for them to do what they want mm-hmm. so it, it would be interesting. Uh, that's maybe why I, I'm more of the why haven't we seen release dates? Mm-hmm. Because it's like these games are about to come out, and I don't know when you're going to show them. Uh, you know, maybe they're gonna they're gonna flirt with putting more. That's what I'm looking for. Using directs more often. Maybe that's something that they might do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can, yeah. I see yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yo, when, what's the last game that had a, like a, a deep dive? I know Xbox had the developer direct, but has Xbox adopted a deep dive for any of their releases yet? Like, we I'm trying to think if there was one for um, was there one for Redfall? 
Like, remember that? Like the I know Redfall was a part of the. I think Redfall had one, but I think it shared with other games. I don't think it had one dedicated to just. Okay, it, it was a part of just the, the developer direct, or, or or was it was it an IGN first or no? Uh, maybe. Okay, I'm just trying to think. Question, because you, I know you didn't go to LA this year, but you know. Did any of your folks get to play uh, a Vow or Indiana Jones and and during the? We're not really in that internal thing. Like, I don't. I'm sure it was there to some degree, but when it comes to like seeing seeing stuff that early, it's usually exclusive for media and like the biggest YouTubers. Okay, like, so uh, oh, so there was no. Uh, there was no booth set up with those games there for people to public. To I, to my knowledge, no. But I didn't go and I didn't really talk to Cog and King about what was there and what was okay. not there. Okay. I'm curious, man, because I definitely want to give it a, you know, to see to see some more of that. Um, well, we get fin to wrap this up. You know what I mean? It's uh uh, I know there's a uh, you know again a lot of a lot going on and I know you got um, s- uh, stuff that you're working through. Um, any, anything that you're playing or going to be resume playing anytime soon? I plan on, yeah. It's only so long I can go without not making content, and not feeling like shit. So uh, I plan on starting the back tomorrow. Uh, okay. You know, making a video in the morning and streaming at five. Nice. Uh, so hopefully, you know, everything goes through. Yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I got something. I'm going to be doing uh, a video. I got to be, I have to review this. This is a uh, Spark N5. Uh, it's a PlayStation 5 controller. Not PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4 controller. But it's wireless and it's compatible with the PS4, PS5, and PC. It's shaped like an Xbox controller, so I'm definitely going to give this a yeah, try. Yeah, I think those people reached out to me once. Yeah. Uh, so I'll do the review uh, unboxing. I'm uh, planning to get that done this week. I, I need to play with it, obviously, uh, but I look forward to discussing that. Um, other than that, I mean, as far, I, 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 the, the community needs videos. I'm supposed to be working on some music. Uh, I'm going to try to get that done. Um, and obviously I want to do like more videos and stuff and I'm trying to get uh, comfortable with some games, but right now I'm having, I'm struggling to find a game that hooks me, um, right now. Um, Elden Ring's hooking me, but at the same time, it's not, maybe that's just because like, you know, I'm going through a breakup or mm-hmm. maybe because like, it does seem to be giving a lot more people issues than me. Yeah. Like I, if you look at mine, like I probably have like maybe 10 hours in the game and i see people spending five hours just on the just on um the 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 night with the flame sword and the holy sword and i beat wow. that person like 45 minutes <laughs> you said 45 minutes like like that's a long time and it's not a long time it's a, a considering people who have you know, died a hundred six hours on it oh yeah all right so yeah yeah, I mean it's a lot. Um, I I want to try to get into it. I, I I might download it for sure. I'll try. I'll give it a try. But uh, you know what's funny, Kai? Uh, he was getting beat by the last boss of the expansion really yeah. bad. And there's these little things that you have to collect throughout the map to make yourself stronger. Yeah. There's these little fragments, and you need uh you know X amount of them. And he said, "Okay, I'm done. I'm done." He's like, "By morning." Whoever finds out where all the fragments that I don't have is, I'm going to give you $5,000. Like, $5,000? Wow. Awesome. Yeah, $5, he, he probably made that just yesterday. Like, yeah, I mean, she, I, I, if I was a, a gaming you should try to get that $5,000. I considered, like, grinding, but the thing is, is, like, I'm not really on his streams like that. And I did personally feel like I would have a huge disadvantage because I wouldn't know where to look, and and they do. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so it's just like I'd have to look through all his videos, and I'm sure, you know, his regulars already have a good idea of where they're not there. 
like yeah. what's there and what's not there. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, Attic. Well, we're going to hop out of here. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of the Plan Xbox Podcast. Shout out to Weapon Wheel Podcast, BG, uh, for allowing us uh, to contribute uh, to the Patre- Patreon in a, in a major way, we yeah, will we see gotta, you guys. We gotta start being like really consistent. Yeah, we, with this, we will but. get a dedicated day so that we have a day to do it. Matter of fact, Mondays are are the days that I can do it for sure. Uh, Mondays for like next six months, Mondays. Uh, Mondays. Okay. Um, other than that, you know, we will see you guys on the next video. As always, oh, video next podcast. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. I'm out of here. Peace.